So it's bring kids to work day today, not really, but I brought my kids along. And uh, according to a recent survey, children in North America want nothing more than to be YouTubers just like me. So you guys want to be YouTubers, right? I so want to be one, but not a camera one, because cameras are boring. Great. And Kai, how about you? You want to be an astronaut? I want to work at Chili's. Welcome back to Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here. We've got a bit of a different video for you here this week. We are doing a very unscientific comparison between four very capable travel tripods. Now, what we're looking at today is four tripods which are relatively easy to carry. They're compact, they are great for travel. But a tripod that's great for travel is also great for people who are maybe not able to physically carry heavy weight or want something that they can trek or hike with up a mountain, for example. Or maybe it's just because a lot of us are now using more compact camera systems and we just don't need large heavy tripods to stabilize those. Well, hopefully you're going to get a lot out of this video. Let's get to it. So we chose the four tripods that we chose today because they give us a good cross section of different price points. They're all carbon fiber tripods though and basically getting us up to an eye level. You know, we're not talking about tabletop tripods or anything here. So let's talk about the four tripods that we're going to compare today. Now, you know, tripods all have ridiculous names, so I'm going to give them nicknames just to make it easier throughout the review. The first one here is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. Now, I had a really hard time coming up with a name for that, so we're just going to call him PDTT. This is the Gitzo 1545T kit with ball head. Fantastic kit. Uh, we're going to call him Guillermo. That's Guillermo there. Here we've got the Manfrotto B-Free Carbon Fiber GT tripod, the latest in their B-Free series. They've been very, very popular. I'm going to call him Manfred von B-Free. And here, last but not least, we have the Saray N1204SK with K102 ball head, which is really annoying to say. So uh, instead of Saray, I'm going to call this Sarah. So now while we have all four tripods out here, this actually gives you a really good viewpoint of the comparative minimum size that these tripods can stow into. And this is really important when you're throwing this on the side of your backpack or putting it in your luggage to go traveling with. So you can very clearly see that PDTT is winning, not only in the shortest stowed size, but also the thinnest diameter package. Next, we've got Guillermo, very compact package. Then we've got Manfred, and then we have Sarah over here being the largest of the four. Now another thing to keep in mind is that these three tripods only achieve this minimum stowage by reversing the legs upon themselves. Now this is really nice, it's a thoughtful way to get it as small as possible, but it does also mean that when you're actually using these tripods, you're probably not going to want to reverse them every single time. You very well will have the head sticking out and that's going to make it a little bit larger. Let's also make note that the Peak Design doesn't have to do that, so you'll always get this as your minimum stowage size. So as you can see, we have a quite obvious difference in the size when we actually have these in a more usable position. Even with the heads turned sideways to minimize that height as much as possible, you're looking at 15.4 inches here with the PDTT, and Sarah over here is pushing 24 inches in maximum height. You can see Guillermo and Manfred are also quite tall. So there's a substantial savings here, and that is a big benefit for the PDTT. However, how is that going to translate into actual size in use? So now we've got all four tripods with their legs fully extended, but we have not extended the center columns. This is actually the most stable position, and this is probably where you're going to use these tripods most of the time. This is getting the cameras roughly to eye level for most people, but this is where it's very important to mention now that being the shortest is not necessarily the best. As you can see though, we've got the Manfrotto, the Gitzo, and the Saray at a very similar height level. This is definitely losing some height, and that is going to be a disadvantage for most people. Okay, so now you can see we've got all four tripods with the columns extended and uh, you can still see the Peak Design here has distinct disadvantage in height. You know, for me, it's going to be good for eye level shooting, but if somebody Jordan Tall tried to use this, they're still going to be hunching over significantly just to get eye level height. And there's actually a lot to be said for having a tripod that goes well above your eye level. For example, I'm really liking Sarah over here, she's a perfect height, because when I hold this up like this, I can comfortably use the tripod without having to lean over and it lets me shoot up into trees and high angles. Think bird photography, for example. Now, I should mention that all four of these tripods, you can also reverse the column so that it's going underneath the legs. This puts the camera well below the center of gravity of the tripod. It gives you a nice, stable position. It's also fantastic when you want to get really low to the ground for things like macro. The wait is finally over. So let's talk about weight. 
All right, time to weigh out our options here. We've got Sarah, the heaviest of the bunch here at 3.95 pounds with the ball head that we chose, but that's okay. I like a tripod with a little bit of weight on their bones. And over here, Manfred von Beefree, not bad, a stout 3.41 pounds, but there are much lighter options. You might think that PDTT over here is going to be the lightest tripod, but it's actually not. This is an upset. This is 2.81 pounds. However, the Gitzo right over here is a very svelte 2.34 pounds. We get the thinnest walled, highest modulus weave in the carbon fiber, and that does pay dividends when it comes to the lightest weight. I'm a big advocate for getting the lightest weight tripod. It means that you're more likely to actually take it with you. And you can then add weight when you're out in the field by using the hooks on these tripods to hang your backpack or a bag of rocks or add some weight to just really give it that stability. So Sarah does have a hook on the bottom of the center column there. Uh, Manfred, you do have a little ring on the side of the tripod, but you'd have to add something like a carabiner and then put on some weight. And that is offset. It's not right in the middle. So I'm not a big fan of that. Now Guillermo also has the same offset ring, but at great expense to yourself, you can add a hook to the bottom. I just wish that for the price of Guillermo, you would actually get that hook included. Now last but not least, PDTT does have a very interesting little hook device on the bottom. And again, it's great there when you want to add more weight to that tripod. Okay, so we're going to do our own little high performance rodeo here with the tripods, basically with the idea that none of them are inverted. They're just ready to shoot, but the legs are all folded up. The test is going to be how quickly can I undo all the leg locks, get the legs fully extended, raise the center column all the way, and then call it done and see what our fastest time is. So let's get to the testing. Full extension on the center, full extension on the center. 1411. Okay, so that was a little bit of fun and we did multiple tests just to try to get the cleanest time on all the tripods. And again, we're talking about what? One second difference across the whole variation. I don't think this is really impact your lives in a huge way, but it's fun. But there are some things that we can mention. Now, first off, I personally really do like twist locks. It's nice that you can grab them with one hand, unlock them all at once, extend the legs and then work back up, tightening them sequentially. That being said, the Peak Design's lever locks are actually spaced right next to each other. So you can can do a very similar thing. Undo all of them with one hand. That's a really nice design. On the peak design, getting the center column raised, you do have a little doohickey on the side, a small screw, but it is small. So although you can extend it and click it out, it takes a little bit of time to find and extend. That slowed me down a little bit. Otherwise, we should also appreciate that you know, Manfred, Guillermo, and Sarah are all four section tripods, and then uh, PDTT is actually gonna be a five section tripod. So that slows you down as well. Okay, so for our next test, we wanna do something highly unscientific, but I think still very useful, and hopefully you guys will feel the same way. We wanted to test how well these four tripods deal with vibrations. I mean, think about your footsteps nearby the tripod. Think about light winds. Think about waterfalls, anything like that where you can have vibration, it does affect your camera movement. So here's first off our test criteria. We tested this with an Olympus OMD EM1X with a 600 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. We made sure we shot at 15th of a second. What we want to do is test these tripods both fully extended but with the center column down and fully extended but with the center column raised up to its maximum height. Now as for our vibration that we wanted to get into this experiment, we needed to be consistent but we still needed to be powerful. So you know, we Googled vibrating devices and things like that. And, you know, just happened to find some interesting stores where you can actually find what we will call tripod stabilization calibration devices. It worked, I think, very well. So let's get to the results. So the Manfrotto and the Saray were actually our best performing tripods across the board. They're also, interesting to note, the heaviest and the most affordable out of the bunch. But I would say that they were basically neck and neck equal whether the center columns were raised or not. Very slightly below those, I'm gonna to go to the peak design. When the peak design center column was lowered, we got very similar results, even with vibration. But when raised, I can see there's just a slight bit more movement. Very surprisingly though was the Gitzo, which I actually have to put in last place, even though it's the most expensive. It had the most vibration. I'd say it's very equal to the peak, but when the center column was raised, it was by far the worst. And you do notice quite a bit of movement. The heavier the tripod, the better it handled 
handles vibrations like we tested with. So with any of these tripods, put some weight on those hooks, get that weight into the tripod, and I think you'll find that all four will deliver fantastic results. Okay, so I just wanna spend a little bit of time talking about some of the things I noticed about these different tripods. So Guillermo first. I really do like that Gitzo's finally gone to an Arca Swiss style head. That was a big benefit over that proprietary plate they used to have. I really like the ball head. It was smooth and when you lock it down, you don't get that creep afterwards where your, your frame shifts a little bit, but they don't give you any extras. I think at this price, you should get spiked feet. You should get a hook on here. You should get a proper bag. Manfrotto has done some really good stuff here. We've got metal where you need it, but there is still a reliance on plastic parts, and I, that kind of worries me. Plastic center column lock, you know, plastic ball head locks. I don't like that, especially in cold weather. I have seen these things crack over the years. I do like that they've redesigned the plate and the head. It is still proprietary Manfrotto in the way that it clips into their head. However, the plate is Arca Swiss, so you can use it on other Arca Swiss accessories. One big downside, though, because they're still insisting on using their own locking system, you cannot put long Arca plates into this ball head, and that's kind of a downside. As well, although I like the locking system here, it does sometimes jam up against the battery grip on a camera, so you gotta reverse it and go the other direction. That's kind of pain in the butt as well. The center column lock, it's quite stiff. You can see here, you really gotta use a lot of force to move the center column. Now, that's safe, I like that, but it is still you know, a little bit difficult and slow to move. And if you do pull in it too hard or you got a heavy camera, remember that this little plastic plug at the end, it's easy to pop out and you're gonna lose it. You could even have a camera fall. All right, Peak Design I think have done something really amazing with PDTT here. I like the locking levers, I like the switches. The only thing that kind of worries me is maybe it's overly engineered, but so far everything works well. I do like that these lever locks are metal, so you have that security because they are absolutely thin. Will they crack in the future? I don't know, but they seem pretty solid. Now lever locks normally, they're slow for me to use, but these are quite quick to open up. And again, the only issue I would ever have with lever locks is they can get gummed up, you can get stuff in it. You just take a look at our old man Frodo and you can see what happens there. So they're gonna be more maintenance than screw lock. It does use Arca Swiss. You can unscrew these detentes and then you can put long plates in there as well. And again, the only complaint I really have about that whole system, you are dependent on an Allen key, not only to get those out, but to attach your Arca Swiss plate. That I think is a really stupid idea because if that Allen key gets lost, you're screwed. All the other company's plates, you've got coin locks, you've got Allen key locks, and you've got finger locks all built into the plate. And I think that's a way smarter design. But otherwise, this is very innovative. So Sarah was very good to me today. It's great value for the dollar because you get so many extras. Saray gives you option to turn one of these legs into a monopod. You get a carry strap for that. They also give you spiked feet. You don't have to buy those extra. That should be standard on everybody's tripod. The center column on this is also the only one that you can split down shorter if you don't need it, and that'll cut a little bit of weight off. And I do like the Arca Swiss plate on here. Again, it's a long dovetail plate. You can certainly put long plates on it or telephoto lenses that have the dovetail cut on the foot, and that'll fit right in there very nicely. I do also like that we've got bubble levels on the side. The Saray, the Gitzo, and the Peak Design have a bubble level on top, but once you've got your camera on there, it's very hard to reference it. So I like that we have this on the side. The only thing I don't like about it is actually going back to the head and again there's different heads you can get this is the one that we happen to test here but even with the friction adjustment on there you got to really torque this down to get this to lock and even if it's heaviest torque I can still move it I don't think this can be an issue when you have a camera on there but you really want to torque it if you want that stability all right so it's time for my final thoughts on all four tripods I'm going to start with Sarah first and really the takeaway here is this Fantastic value for the dollar. Great price point, you get tons of extras, and the tripod performs beautifully. It's one of the best performing. The only issue there is you have to be okay with the extra bulk and the weight. You can make a lighter tripod heavier, but you cannot make this tripod much lighter. So just keep that in mind. So then that brings us to Manfred, and actually this was quite interesting. I didn't expect it to perform as well as it did, but it's a good compromise of weight and features, and the price point is the lowest of all four of the tripods. However, I still didn't like the plastic parts, and they still need to work on that ball head. I wish it was fully Arca Swiss compatible. However, for the price point, this might be a great option for you if you're budget conscious. Oh, now we have to talk about Guillermo, and I just cannot in good conscience say that this tripod is anywhere close to good value 
value for the dollar. But Gitzo is providing a tripod that has fantastic technology and the best build quality by far. It's got nice finish, everything feels smooth. There's a lot to be said for that. The other big takeaway, it is still the lightest of the four tripods, but it still gives you height comparable to the Saray and the Manfrotto. And so if weight savings is critical for the work you're doing, this might be the make or break thing for you. And again, you can always make the tripod heavier if you need to. And finally, let's talk about the PDTT. And really, I can see why so many people online are raving about this tripod, because they've done something very innovative. We have a tripod which is very compact and very easy to carry, and that is a huge advantage. It's also very lightweight in the spectrum of these four tripods. The only concerns I have, you're not gonna get the same height as the other tripods. And for some of you out there, that might actually be a critical problem. In the testing that we did, it performed very, very well. And it's a very interesting product for this year. All right, as always, I hope you guys found that useful. We only tested four tripods, I know, but these are ones that we felt you know, covered a good cross section of the market. I wanna say a special thanks to my boys for helping out. That was great to have them with us. So are you guys having fun with the whole YouTube thing? And uh, don't forget, leave comments below, Instagram, Twitter. Let us know what you think. Please subscribe as well. And if you enjoy this kind of video, let us know. We'd love to test memory card torture tests, maybe monopods, heavier tripods. You let us know what you want to see. Thanks so much for joining us.